In this tutorial, we're taking a look at WiseCut, which uses AI and voice recognition to automatically edit videos for you. Now, I haven't tried it for that purpose. I've been using it for transcriptions for my YouTube videos. I'm going to show you that use case and how I use it for that. And it's currently an AppSumo deal for a lifetime. So if you like what you see, that's the place to get it. And if you have any questions or comments about this specific video, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. Today we're going to take a look at WiseCut. It is an AppSumo deal. It's been here for quite a while, so I don't know how long it'll be here after I make this video. But I finally tried it out. It took me a long time to get there, but I finally tried it, and I'm going to show you what I learned in this video. So if the AppSumo deal is still available, there's a link in the description to check that out. I, it is an affiliate link. So if you do buy through that, I get a small commission. Helps me keep making these videos. Doesn't make it more expensive for you. I just get a commission from AppSumo. If the AppSumo deal is over, there may be a link down there to the WiseCut website itself as an affiliate link. So you can click on either one of those if you want to give me some credit. That'd be great. And WiseCut itself, the reason I got it was for transcription. I make a lot of YouTube videos, as you may know, and apparently when you add closed captioning or custom transcriptions to your YouTube videos, they do better. I experimented with this in the past using rev.com. Let's just check out their pricing right now. I believe when I did it, it was $3 a minute, and I spent a few hundred bucks on five or 10 videos. That's a $1.25 per minute. But anyway, I spent a few hundred bucks doing rev.com transcriptions and I watched the videos over time. They didn't do a whole lot better, the ones that had transcriptions, but I'm not convinced that it doesn't make it better. I'm also not convinced that it does. But either way, I wanted to give WiseCut a try because one of the things it does is transcriptions. And if you get the plan that I got, I got the tier three, it gives you 20 hours of transcriptions, which is pretty legit. That's a good amount. And the way you use it, is you go to the plus to add a new project. It's a really simple app, WiseCut. So we click on add media. We find a file to upload or we can upload from the library, which is stuff we already uploaded. So you can go back and edit stuff you already have inside of WiseCut. It's gonna find the new file. Just use one of my older videos. And now we click on upload one file. If you add more files to this, it's gonna stitch them all together. So if you make a video in multiple recordings, but it's all one video, and then you add them in here in the correct order, it's gonna stitch them all together as though it's one video. So if you're uploading completed videos like I am, then you wanna do one at a time. Click on upload files, click on add media again if you wanna add more, but now it's processing and uploading. We can click on next right over here. I'm gonna choose someone who's speaking, and we choose their language. It supports English, Portuguese, German, Spanish, French, Italian, I don't know, Farsi, Hindi, I'm not sure what that is, and Filipino. I'm gonna choose English. You wanna choose the language that the person is speaking in the video. You can also choose, my video doesn't have a voice, but it has background sounds that I want to keep. You can also choose, my video has no sound, or I want to mute it. Click on next when you've chosen what you want. You can choose background music. You can click the check mark. You can click on play to have a listen, to hear what the background music is. I don't play background music in my videos, and I can't uncheck this. So I always turn this off. And smart background music is gonna do audio ducking. So when someone's talking, the music is gonna be quieter than when they're not talking. Click on next when you're ready. Let's give this project a name. This was disable WordPress emails, I think. Let's name it the name of the video. You can choose to auto cut silences. I turn the smart background music off. You can turn it on in here if you want. You can do auto punch in, AI voice booster, and burned in captions. I usually have all of these off. For my purposes, I just wanna use it for transcriptions. And I've tested this as an editor, and for my recording style, it didn't work. What I do when I record is if I make a mistake, I'll clap. And then in the audio timeline, in the waveform, I can see where the claps are so I can edit faster. And when I tried this on a raw video that I created, it didn't take the claps out because it doesn't know that those claps mean anything, like they mean something to me. And it's also supposed to take out words that you repeat, and it didn't do that either. At least not for me. Maybe I stored my words too much. Maybe I mumbled too much. I'm not sure. But I didn't take out the words that I wanted. And I figured what I could do is I could record a video. I could output the video file, 
upload it to Wisecut for a first pass so it can edit out awkward silences, it can edit out multiple words I'm repeating, and it can do just the basic editing. And then I'll download it and then I will, then I would edit the rest manually hoping it would speed things up. What I found was it's not the case. It's not faster to do it that way for me. And awkward silences for screen capture videos are not necessarily awkward silences because I might be doing something on screen but not making any noise while I'm doing it. And so this wise cut method of editing doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me personally but it might make a lot of sense for you. And in fact, on their website, on the homepage, if you go to wisecut.video, here's some examples of Ruben. Here's the before video, 17 minutes long, and the after video, five minutes long. So you can see what Wisecut can do. There's a chance, since they know their software, that they made this recording just the right way to make this work. I'm not sure. It didn't work for me when I did my style of recording, but that's okay. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. Great project. And now it's crunching all the transcriptions. This takes some time. The longer the video is, the longer it'll take. And when it's done, there we go. So you have to wait on the screen until this message comes up. And now it's crunching things in the background. Now we can go to the project list. And even though it said it'll lose all your data, it won't because you can see it right up here. And I'm gonna open this one right here. I uploaded these in the past. I just went boom, upload, boom, upload, boom, upload, and did a whole bunch at once just to see what would happen and handled them all just fine. And with Wisecut, you have 150 gigabytes of storage. I just got an email today about a week after buying Wisecut and they said, if you want 50 more gigabytes, you can leave an AppSumo review. So there's, there's that to increase your, your megabytes. And all these videos I uploaded so far, I still have 141 gigabytes remaining. So there's lots of gigabytes remaining. Available processing time, 16 hours left out of 20 hours that renews every month. The available storage does not review every month. The max length for a single file is an hour and a half. That does not increase or renew every month. Max size for one file is five gigabytes. And there's a bunch of videos I have that are bigger than that. So that's not the perfect limit for me. But if I go back to our, if I can get there, project list right here, let's go to this one, click on the pencil icon, and every video you upload is gonna have a screen like this where you can review what happened in the video. Here we have 416 lines of subtitling created. Click on edit project, and it has scenes, and it shows screenshots of the video, and these are the transcriptions that it made. And you can read through here and make any changes as you need them. If there's some parts where you mumbled too much or the system didn't recognize what you're saying or recognize it improperly, you can just click on it. Let's go to some place farther along. Click right here and it actually plays that part. As it's talking on the video, it's showing what it's saying down here. And so you can easily make changes or someone on your team can easily make changes to the transcription. You can also push the play button here to play the scene from the beginning. You can play from this scene to the end of the video. You can change the scene volume. This will also apply for when the final rendering happens. So right now we're actually in the middle stage of the rendering. We set up those initial settings that you saw a moment ago, and now we can come in and edit the transcriptions. We can edit our scenes. We can make it just right. We can raise volume, decrease volume, duplicate the scene, change the scene type, edit subtitles, which we're doing right here. We can cut pieces and we can also delete the scene. And we can also click on the plus and we can add in scenes. Just check the box, add in a scene that you want and you're off to the races. That's not how I do my videos, but you could definitely do that. In fact, all the videos in my account right now are completely edited and ready to go into YouTube or wherever they're going. I just want the transcriptions. So you come in here, do the transcriptions. Once you're happy with all of those, you can check out the translations tab. You can translate the transcriptions, not the audio, but the transcriptions into a different language if you want. You can customize the music here again. Another time you can customize music. In the settings, you can set a lot of the options we had before in here. And then when you're all done, you can preview and export. And you have to export the video before you can get your transcription file. We can choose our quality. I record in 4K, so I'm gonna choose 4K. You can change the aspect ratio to landscape, portrait, or square. If you're publishing this to social media, you can choose the appropriate size. You can even re-render the same video and make it different sizes for the different social networks if you want. Then we click on export video and now this will take some time to crunch as well and then notify you via email when it's ready. 
So let's go to a different project in our list. Oh, and, and also that one I just did, clearly I didn't edit any of the transcription and there are some errors. And what you can do is after it's done exporting, you actually go back and edit it again, but then you have to go through the export process again after that. So ideally you do everything you want and you do it properly the first time, then you export it and then it'll be ready to go. And then when it's exported, let's check out this one right here. This one's been exported. Let's go preview and export again. Now we have these options here. We can choose to connect to YouTube as in upload directly to YouTube. We can download the finished video. We can download the subtitles and we can reopen the project. And reopening the project takes us back to the editor where we were earlier where we can make all our changes. And I just noticed that this is a fantastic freeze frame right here. Now this video doesn't have this option enabled, but you can have the transcription be burned right onto the video. So when you play it, it actually has the words down below. And for certain social networks, that's a great idea to have. For now, I'm just gonna download subtitles and this will save the subtitles as an SRT file, I believe. Let's open this and unzip it. So there's lots of options of set transcription types in here. SRT is the one that goes on YouTube. There's a .qt.txt. These are all mostly text files, but you can use these as show notes for your podcast. You can have a blog page that has the transcription as the show notes for the podcast, for example. Lots of different uses for these files. I would use SRT and the text transcription at the moment, but maybe in the future I'll find other uses for the other ones. And I want to show you an example of where the text is burned onto the screen. I may not have that right now. Let's try this one. I think this one's exported. It's not yet, but if we go to the settings, this option right here, burned in captions, when that's turned on, the captions will be burned in. Here's an example right there. And so the way we did the translation, or sorry, transcriptions earlier on the storyboard, as the video is playing, you see they're highlighted in red. This is what will be burned onto the screen as I'm talking. And I tried this one time just to see how it worked. And the timing was pretty good. I was pretty happy with the timing. So it wasn't like the transcriptions were uh, 15 frames late or not 15, maybe 100 frames or 15 seconds or whatever. It wasn't that they were late, they were right on time and it worked out pretty well. But like I said, I only tried it once. There's the AI voice booster. My voice is radio quality, I like to think. So I don't need the AI voice booster, although I probably could. I could have a deeper voice, more radio voice for these things. Video enhancer, I haven't tried the video enhancer. enhancer. Really, my videos are pretty straightforward, at least the ones I put on YouTube. So mm -hmm. a lot of these options don't really work for enhancing screen capture videos, if you know what I mean. And I wanna show you what the burned in captions look like. So I turn that setting on for this video. Let's go to preview and export. We can see the video right here. Up here it says some changes were not previewed. To see these changes before exporting, click on render now. So anytime you make changes to anything, you gotta re-render and it takes quite a time to re-render. And the longer the video is, the longer it'll take. And so we have burned in captions. We can see them right here already. And right now I'm recording computer audio as well. So when I push play, you should be able to hear me talking and the captions appearing down below as I speak. And keep in mind, I haven't edited these yet. I just wanted to show you the burned in captions and how they work. You might have some of the wrong words, but the timing should be appropriate. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to disable WordPress auto update notification emails, and I'm gonna explain what those emails actually are that you're disabling. I'm gonna show you how to do this with a free plugin. This is not required, here. it just looks better in my opinion. But the two forward slashes comment out this code. So this code still exists here, but it's gonna be ignored by the servers and not actually executed. And so when I have this one commented out like this, the core update emails will continue to be sent and the theme update emails are gonna be blocked and the plugin update emails are gonna be blocked because those filters are still turned on. If you so that's the burn-in captions. As you saw, the timing is pretty good and that's halfway through the video. So if there was bad timing at some point, you think it would have shown up by now. In these captions, there are some caption settings here for the video as well. You can turn them off and go to settings. You can change the font size, background, all that information. And then you can click on export and it'll burn them right in. But when they're burned in, you can't. So quite often, you might use one of these other aspect ratio formats and post to Instagram or Facebook with the captions burned onto the video so that people who are listening without audio can read what's happening in the video. That's very, very common. And this is a great way to use WiseCut to do that kind of thing for your social media.
So in a nutshell, that's how I use WiseCut. There's a bunch of different ways you can use it. Hopefully you can find a way that works for you because WiseCut can definitely increase your productivity and reduce the amount of time you spend editing if you have just the right editing needs. My editing needs are a little more complex than WiseCut does. And with my clapping, maybe that's the problem with the clapping. Maybe if I didn't do the clapping during my videos to help with editing, maybe then it would cut it properly. I'm not sure. But the best thing to do is just give it a go and see what happens. So if you do want to give it a go, check out the links in the description down below. I really appreciate you buying through those because it helps me keep making these videos. If you found this video useful and you like AppSumo deals and like to get walkthroughs of how they can actually be used for real use cases rather than just a quick review of buttons you can find inside the software, check out this playlist right here where I walk through a lot of different AppSumo deals that you can get for lifetime. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass in the WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.